Okay, finally, so these are just getting, adding additional complications as we go. So finally, I'd like to do an example where the trig of a trig equation where the trig functions are not all the same type of trig function. So they're not all sine functions, or they're not all cosine functions, or they're not all tangent functions, that kind of thing. So if the equation contains two or more different trig functions, then you make them all the same. That's the trick. <laughs> and then you solve the resulting equation. So for example, solve two sine x equals one minus two cosine x. You wanna change this so that all you have is sine or all you have is cosine. So what I did is I just squared both sides because that gives me a sine squared x and I know I can write sine squared x in terms of cosine squared x because of the Pythagorean theorem for trig functions. So when I squared both sides, I got four sine squared x equals one minus four cosine x plus four cosine squared x. And then because cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals one, that's an identity. We get sine squared x equals one minus cosine squared x. And then I substitute that in for this sine x to make those cosines. So I get four times the quantity one minus cosine squared equals one minus four cosine x plus four cosine squared x. And I have to multiply out the stuff on the left and then put gather everything on one side, probably the right side. So I get four minus four cosine squared x equals one minus four cosine x plus four cosine squared x. Blah. <laughs> and then when I um, put those things on the left on the right side, I get zero equals, don't forget the zero, zero equals eight cosine squared x minus four cosine x minus three. I wrote them in descending powers of cosine. That's a quadratic in cosine. And so I can try to factor it if it factors, which it didn't. So I use the quadratic formula. And this is where it's important that you put this, that you have a habit of putting this part of it in there. Not instead of just leaving it blank and just computing the right hand side, you're finding cosine of x, not x, cosine of x. So it's the middle term the variable part of the middle term, the part other than the coefficient, which is cosine x equals opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. If you multiply on the right by a negative number, you need parentheses, not just dot times. Okay, over two times a. And this will simplify to one, I just did the simplification on one step because you can write out the multiple steps yourself. You get one plus or minus square root of seven over four. That's what cosine x is. Now this is a little bit easier because it doesn't have cosine of the quantity two x minus one or something, it's just cosine x. Now, both of these are in the range of cosine. What's the range of cosine? It goes between, it oscillates between minus one and one, right? Co cosine goes between one and minus one. And all of these numbers are between one and minus one, all, uh, both of these numbers. So they're both in range of cosine. You should always check that. So that means, what does that mean? From cosine x, equals one plus square root of seven over four, you get x equals plus or minus. Remember with cosine, you always get, when you do the inverse trig function, you always get that plus or minus, just like you would with the square. That's because cosine is an even function. So x equals plus or minus cosine inverse of one plus seven, square root of seven over four plus two pi k where k is an integer or cosine or plus or minus cosine 
inverse of one minus square root of seven over four Well, I, oops, I'm sorry. So that was the one for the plus. Then the one with the minus square root of seven, you get the same thing, only with the minus square root of seven. So that's four different answers, notice. Now it didn't say that the answers have to be within a certain interval. So they just want all of the answers. And so you need to check the four primary answers to see if they actually work in the original equation. This is critical. So I took uh, x equals cosine inverse of one plus seven, one plus square root of seven over four. That's this one here with the plus. I tried that one and I put it in this original equation to see if the left side equals the right side. And then I took the minus version of it. So the, I'm doing both of these first and put them in here. Now to do that, I'm going to store this number in a memory. Maybe I store that in memory A and store that in memory B. And then I can type this out, 2 sine A, enter, and then 1 minus 2 cosine A, and see if they're the same. Okay, so you want to use your memories on this, the memory on the calculator. So these are the, I'm writing the four principal answers out is what I'm doing. So that, that's the first one from this set, because it's got the minus on the square root of seven. And then we get the same thing, but a minus in front. Okay, and I put each of these into a memory and then just plug them in the original equation to see which ones work. And those two didn't work. Only the, the negative cosines worked. Um, so those two didn't work, and the two on the right side, x equals negative cosine inverse of one plus square root of seven over four, and x equals negative cosine inverse of one minus uh, square root of seven over four. Those are the two that worked. So you have to check these, okay? Um, and so, and the reason we have to check these, and the reason why we get these spurious solutions is because I squared both sides of the equation. And a squaring function is not one-to-one, -one, so it can add extra, extra spurious solutions. So that's why I needed to check those. Okay. So my answers are going to be those. I just put the two together with the plus or minus on the square root of seven. And then you have to add the 2 pi k, where k is in the integers. And that's it for that section. And it's, there's a lot of stuff in that section. Uh, go over these problems multiple times. Make sure that you understand them. And then do a lot of practice problems until you can get them right. Uh, and if you start getting confused, kind of take a big, deep breath kind of go back and see where you lost the thread and then pick it up from there. Maybe take a few breaks now and then so that you don't get frustrated. <laughs> okay, good luck with this section. It's one of the more difficult sections. I should say one of the more challenging sections uh, for most students.